Hi friends, Simit here from InformedTrades.com. In this video, I want to talk about Martin Armstrong, a uh, very famous and successful trader, and some of the lessons that we can learn from Armstrong and his approach to the markets. Key points. Armstrong is uh, most known for being very much into cycles, his pioneering work in, uh, in cycles and markets. Basically, he operates from the belief that markets aren't linear, but that they're cyclical. And if we understand cycles, we can understand turning points in the market. Major cycles that Armstrong focuses on are 8.6 years and 51.6 years. That at these intervals, uh, there is a tendency for capital to really concentrate and for a panic exodus to uh, to emerge at these times. Uh, cycles forecast turning points, not direction, so it's important to understand when we're at that key time, when we're at those key intervals, uh, where is capital, where might it be ready to move into a new direction. Uh, these are just two of the cycles, 8.6 year and 51.6 year, but there are many cycles. There are cycles within cycles. There are asset specific cycles, a 38 year cycle for gold, for instance. Um, but, you know, this is it's a very rich discipline. 8.6 years and 51.6 years will be the two that we focus on the most in this, uh, in this video. Uh, these cycles basically are part of what could be called the economic confidence model, or what Armstrong does call the economic confidence model. Um, basically, the idea is that you know every 8.6 years there's a concentration of capital and, and a panic of some type, perhaps a small one. Uh, the 8.6 year cycle can be broken down into three individual alternating waves with a time duration of 2.15 and 1.075 year, uh, periods. Excuse me. Um, so you, again, you can break those cycles into smaller cycles, and in fact, the 51.6 year cycle is just six of the 8.6 year cycles. Um, and then, of course, we take six of the 51.6 year cycles, and we get 309.6 years. Uh, the longer the term, you know, obviously, the the longer cycles they occur uh, less frequently. Um, but when they do occur, it's particularly intense. The Great Depression in 1929, the, Great, the U.S. Great Depression in 1929, occurred at a 51.6 year uh, interval. Uh, that's an example. Here is uh, sort of the 8.6 year cycle with some of the key dates on it. Um, and again, you know, the 8.6 year cycle can be subdivided into 2.15 year quarterly cycles. So when we're coming on these dates, we want to see, is there a concentration of capital somewhere? If so, uh, that could signify, you know, a turning point, a top or a bottom that we can uh, base our trading decisions around. Uh, for instance, here, here's a 2.15 year quarterly cycle. It happened in the first quarter of 2009. Uh, if we think back to that time, that was the bottom in the S&P 500, bottom in U.S. equities after the 2008 crash. If we, that's an example of there really being a concentration of short positions or, or just a, a market clearing type of environment. Uh, if we observe that technically and with fundamentals and we look at this cycle data, uh, that could have given us the cue to buy. Uh, similarly, on the 8.6 year cycle, which is a more historic event or, or a bigger, more significant than the 2.15 year quarterly cycle, uh, one of those 8.6 year cycle events occurred at uh, towards the end of 1989, which was when the Nikkei in Japan peaked and before it entered 20 year period, more than 20 years now, of, uh, of a decline. Um, so that's sort of the example, the kind of example, uh, even here, uh, first quarter of 2007, that was when the U.S. stock market uh, sort of reached a, a peak of sorts before the crash. Um, so that's sort of, you know, the basic idea here is identify these dates on the cycle. When, one of these, when we're approaching one of these dates, you know, we can ask ourselves what looks like it's technically overbought, oversold fundamentally, uh, what looks like it we may be at a top or bottom, also in terms of sentiment. When we combine these factors uh, with cycle analysis, we can get an idea of where the market may be ready to turn. Here's a list of 2.15 year intervals. Uh, you know, 2015, for instance, this right here, the, towards the end of 2015, is also an 8.6 year cycle. Uh, Armstrong expects that the gold market, as an example, could reach a top during that time. So basically, here's a list of dates you keep it in mind, uh, and as price approaches these turning points, we get an idea of, of what may be ready to pivot. That's about it. Questions? Join us at informedtrades